Thanks again for joining us uh, with Go Virtual Career Pathway Conference. My name is Esteban Monje. I'm the work-based learning uh, specialist in the Grossmont Union High School District. Uh, prior to that, I was a CTE teacher in sports medicine for 10 years, and uh, I'm now working here in the district office. Um, and I'll be the, the room host and moderator for today. We ask that you all please um, keep yourselves muted and uh, unless otherwise uh, asked otherwise during the presentation. Feel free to use the chat. I'll be monitoring that, and um, you know we'll be attacking those questions as we as we move on. The presentation will be linked uh, in the chat. Um, if you got here just a, a few minutes ago, uh, we'll link that as well in, in the end in the chat there. I'd like to introduce you to our presenter. His name is Eric Frey. He's from San Pasqual Academy, and this presentation is student-centered Zoom interactive and collaborative activities. So I'll go ahead and pass it along to Eric. Thank you so much. Well, um, I'm pretty excited to be here today. Um, I've done a couple of presentations uh, live with Q before, but never online. So if you're more experienced, um, I always uh, like tips, but um, basically I'm, I'm really interested in, in learning how to engage students by using Zoom. So since we have our digital learning, distance learning, how am I going to kind of make them feel like they are doing something, that they are you know, sharing something, that they're working together, and to make it uh, less passive. So right now, um, I'm at uh, San Pasquale Academy, which is a part of the JCCS, and it is a residential uh, foster uh, facility, and it's uh, self-enclosed. The students have a residential uh, life where they have house parents 24-7, uh, and they have a fantastic cafeteria of access to sports, and then they walk to their classes, and they have a semester-based uh, program, and they have periods throughout the day. And then in the afternoon, there's quite a few activities and opportunities for clubs. So um, I've been in this my third year. Uh, I also had an opportunity to teach in the hall and in community schools. So I got a little bit of idea of the student population of JCCS. Uh, a little bit uh, more about me. So I, I love this quote here. It's kind of something that I've grown up with <clears throat> my whole life since I asked the first question, why? So I always identified as a science person, you know, wanting to take things apart, build things, invent things, create things, dream about things. Um, no internet when I was growing up, but I had the libraries. So I lived in the libraries. I grew up in New York City. Um, I got interested in volunteering in labs when I was pretty young. And during the big blackout of Manhattan, uh, we had an opportunity to have something go wrong with the lab animals I was taking care of. And by the time we figured out what that went on with the temperature because of the blackout, we found out that temperature affects um, thyroid function in, in rats and later to show that thyroid function is affected by temperature in humans. So I got my name on paper in high school because of a pure accident of a blackout in New York. So then I moved to Boston and um, got my uh, degrees there and then worked for about six years in neurobiology research at Brigham and Women's. And then I moved out to California for a different life experience and was part of a science startup, uh, Luminor Incorporated, which was really the business aspect, travel around the country doing uh, biological applications of this product, and then uh, got married, started raising my family, and decided to become a science teacher in 2000. So it's been a spectacular journey, not only with my own kids, <clears throat> but all the different schools that I've been part of, um, all the great science communities, so I feel Super blessed. Um, I decided to go back and kind of explore digital education and went to National University. And after that kind of focus for the last 10 years on Title I science development. How can I go into schools that, that needed um, different types of digital education and hands-on and lab stuff that comes very naturally to me. So now the question is why? So the reason I decided to even apply for this um, presenter <laughs> presenting is why, 
do we have to have interactive and engaging activities on Zoom? In other words, um, the students are either at home or in our case in a classroom watching a screen, you know, what is the best way to try to give them options? What's the best way to try to get them engaged, to have imagination, to be creative when all they have is their screen? And part of it is teaching them how to do certain activities and certain tools, like for instance, Scratch, but that's a big learning, you know, um, curve, but Scratch has been great for my robotics classes. But how about the rest of the basic uh, biology and science, okay? So, so what I wanted to do is adapt the digital classroom with simple and free activities that I mainly use in science. But this is, since this is CTE, I thought, okay, let's really focus most of this, not on science, but open content um, uh, projects or different open content programs. And I'm sure some of you have, are familiar or maybe more familiar than I with some of these, but I just wanna show you the kind of things that I use and the kind of things that are successful with my kids. Um, I happen to have kind of smallish classrooms and the kids need um, you know, a lot of encouragement. And I find these activities really get them to have more uh, self-esteem and more uh, engagement and obviously uh, it pulls a lot about their previous knowledge and their questions. All right, so um, these are what I'm gonna go over first. I'm gonna go over Kia, Quizlet, Google Forms, audio and visual quizzes, which are very interesting. Zoom smartphones as a DocuCam, which is one of my absolute favorites, and then Edpuzzle. Also, these are all uh, platforms and, and programs that can be adapted to any content, okay? He is the only one that if you want to use it for more than a month, you'll have to pay a fee, but it's something that gets the kids um, going. After that, towards the end, I'm gonna kind of focus on a couple of science um, uh, programs that I've been using for a long time, some of it 10 years when FET first came out, and kind of show you how I like to get the kids involved and how they get to create. And I'll be kind of clicking on some of the links and going through. And again, um, I'm sure some of you are very familiar with these. If not, hope you, hope you enjoy it. And let's uh, continue. So let's start off with Kia. So if you have students entering the classroom, you have a lot of them, sometimes it's good to have a quick uh, check-in with them, something for them to do as an activity. And obviously it can be concepts or vocabulary, and so I thought I'd show you this uh, Kia program, which again is free for up to a month. Um, and you can kind of do all your stuff in that month for free and then you're kind of done. And after that, I think it's a couple bucks a month, but everything else is totally free. So let me just show you um, the kind of list here. So if you choose activity type, there are all these different types of activities, digital for them to be physically doing stuff, while like you're doing attendance and stuff. But look at the choices. I think there's over a thousand different Kia kind of puzzles, word searches, matching, memory games. And so just for fun, I figured, okay, let's choose CTE, which um, I know a little bit about, not, not a lot, but I absolutely love the CTE program. So let's, let's just go to CTE and see what they have. <clears throat> and it's gonna pull up, um, let's say a quiz, so CTE. Now you can see it's a huge, huge uh, range of, of um, topics here. So let's do CTE. So these are all kinds of choices here. So anything that's listed in our CTE, um, computer science, um, all kinds of anything that's happens to be listed in here, CTE, uh, you can choose on. So I think also I had career, I had a lot of food service um, stuff in the CTE for careers. So career technical education, when I did this one, I was surprised, let's say food service, entrepreneurship, accounting, all kinds of different random things. So you can search for stuff that's out there or you can make your own um, Kia. 
So let me continue now. Um, let's now go back and go to the next slide. And I'll show you an idea of what we can do for cell activities. So this game is a matching game. So here would be something you could put your terms and your definitions, or they could be pictures and definitions, and it has a score, you know? And so for instance, if the students, um, you know, want to try to figure out their um, different kind of like warm up and, you know, matching the vocabulary, they can start doing this and get their score. And then they can take a screenshot and they can post it in their um, science notebook, which I have them keep open in a tab. And if they want to go back and, um, and check and see what the list of terms is for the activity, here's the list of terms. Again, open concept. This is what I, can, I use for science. But you can make your own list with your own definition and really tailor it to what you're doing. So Kia is, is something that I think is uh, really um, valuable. The concentration games, um, you can kind of guess, are matching this way. You match the term and the definition. And again, you always have the, the vocabulary list. So there's all kinds of um, different options for games and activities. They engage the student, and then they can get a score. They can try to match their score. They get pretty excited, put their score in the chat. Um, again, using Zoom to kind of introduce your lesson or to get them going. Um, Quizlet, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are excellent at Quizlet. Quizlet has got so many features, including ones you can pay for. Again, this is all free. And the ones you can pay for um, gives you scores sent back to your classroom directly to your uh, grade book, which I think is fantastic. But again, this is customizable. So if you're a CTE teacher or any kind of teacher, you can uh, very pretty easily and quickly use something specific to your kids in your class, or you can choose you know, tons and tons of different um, Quizlet decks out there and you can edit them as well. So let's hop on to uh, Quizlet here. One of the things the students love to do, you know, as we, of course, uh, uh, go through the vocabulary or the concepts or whatever you want to use in Quizlet. Then the matching game is something that they really love to do. Um, it is time-based here. And so, for instance, um, you know, you can do the matching here and get your best time. And um, see if I can quickly do this. And Eric, we have a question in the chat um, Go ahead. with Q. Um, do you yeah. set up the activity and then share a link with the students or are you able to see your students progress and results within the, uh, your teaching account? You can do both and um, that's excellent. So um, you can, all of these are link based. So you put these in your uh, chat or you can put them in your slide deck or your Google slides or classroom. The students click on it and they're linked in to your classroom if, if you set it up. So um, I don't want to go into great detail on some of these because um, the features are pretty amazing. Quizlet has a live version that's even more expensive where kids can do it collaboratively. I'm trying to focus today on just simple things for you to uh, present your personalized, customized material to your students. But the answer is absolutely yes. The fun thing about um, the Quizlet match game is you can challenge a friend. So the students really can get extra points for this. We, they can email the link to a friend and try to match and try to beat their, their scores. Um, I, I do teach high school. I have students, however, that have missed a lot of schooling because um, the foster environment has a lot of backgrounds. And so sometimes this is great for individual work too, to catch up students and to you know, get them a little bit more homogeneous. The other great thing about um, about Quizlet is there are customizable quizzes and tests, which if you're familiar with it, are uh, really fantastic. One way is that the students can choose their own type of uh, style for options. You can choose written, multiple choice, matching, true or false, or combinations of everything. And what you do is you just create a new test and I've suddenly made a new test that has a little bit of everything. And it gives you scores immediately 
and feedback immediately to your classroom and to your gradebook. So Quizlet is just fantastic. And free. Okay. Google Forms. Um, I don't know how much you have used Google Forms. The great thing about Google Forms is they're interactive. Um, I find them not to be as interactive as some of the other um, two that I talked about because you can't, um, you have to do a lot more work as a teacher to set it up unless you use some templates. Um, however, they're ultimately customizable and they give instant teacher and student feedback. So you can use that immediately in a classroom and put out a Google form, have students collect it, and then share the data immediately in terms of, let's say, graphs or um, average grades or see who's participating, things like that. So Google Forms is great. <clears throat> um, so an example, for instance, of uh, for mitosis, you can put a picture here. This is a template, you know, that I was uh, using. Uh, and again, Google Forms, I'm not as familiar with, with people are experts at this, um, but it's something that I that I do use kind of in my, you know, quiver of activities. All right, so now this is something that we don't think of very often is to use other senses in the classroom. So um, for science, it's pretty easy to have these uh, sounds available on YouTube. However, again, it is customizable because if you are in a certain CT field or some kind of background where you wanna have certain sounds, maybe it's a systolic sound of a, you know, taking blood pressure and just making stuff up, but you know, any kind of sound, the students really perk up and they, they really love it. Um, so for instance, uh, name this animal sound uh, for uh, the way I use this in the classroom. It's just nice to have other um, senses at work here. So the way this particular thing works in science, this is a sound of all the animals there. Then there's a hint. And then there's the answer. So the way I use this is I give the students um, points. Two points if you guess it right away. One point if you guess it with a hint. And zero points if you get the answer. So there's a ton of these on YouTube. There are various sounds um, around the house. There are sounds around um, the world in general, but it, it is something to keep in mind that if you want to design just a little quiz or something to use different senses, um, guess the sound is really kind of a, a fun one to use. Okay, so. Let me get back to my slide deck and get out of the sounds. All right, the next thing which is very popular is name that picture. So similar to the sounds, this is customizable to whatever uh, topic you're using. So for instance, you'd put on a close-up of a picture and this is something I actually do to surprise the kids when I'm making ice cream. And a little bit of a hint, by the way, if you use a little dry ice to help your ice cream come along, you make the best ice cream in the classroom. So you may have a picture and they can try to guess what this is. And then the two points, you know, with no hint, and then a hint, and this is a close up of some cookie dough ice cream. Again, using uh, something slightly different to engage them to get that spark. So I'm looking definitely always for some kind of a little wow, a little spark, a little hook um, of something that intrigues them, you know? And that's what I regard as part of having fun in, in the classroom is something different or something, something where they have to try to think. Now, Edpuzzle is one of my absolute favorite ones because not only is there a huge, huge bank of videos to use, and I'll go through that in a second, but you can also use your own videos and upload them pretty much instantly. And what you can do is create tracks and you can create questions. So I'll give you an example of this one. Let's see if I can get my link working, excuse me.
Let me see. Here we go. So this is a video I downloaded to talk about valence electrons. Welcome to Dogs Teaching Chemistry. Our first lesson is chemical bonding. Chemical bonds are what holds atoms together. A chemical bond is an attraction between atoms that allows the formation of a chemical substance. The electrons that participate in a chemical bond are called valence electrons. These are electrons that are found in an atom's outermost shell. So as you can see, you can plan what's gonna come up here. So in this case here, valence electrons are in the inner or outer shell. Okay, so you can click on this and it gives you an answer. And the answer goes directly into your uh, grade book. So this is completely free. Let's take a look at the types of chemical bonds that can be formed between atoms. An ionic bond is formed when one of the atoms will lose its electron to the other atom. This results in a positively charged ion, called a cation, and a negatively charged ion, called an anion. All right, now this is a big deal. How are you gonna remember which is which? In science, there's so many, this exo and endo, this cat, and, and it, how do you remember which is which? So with my students, I love them to come up with interesting ways to remember one of them. Because if you know one, if you know your right hand, then you know the other one is the left hand. So for instance, you know, what is a great way to remember that cat is positive, you know, the positive part. And some kids come up with great, great individual answers, and then they get to type it in. I put one that the students like to do. Cats have claws like a positive sign. So remember that a cat has got claws, it's positive. So the other one has to be negative, okay? So again, they have to type something in. And again, it goes into your grade book and shares with the class. Ion. Positive and negative attract, and the result is an ionic bond. So again, you can do uh, open-ended questions, multiple choice, or notes. You know, what other words have a co-meaning, meaning like covalent to share? and kids would come up with a list of words, co-pilot, et cetera. Covalent chemical bonds involve the sharing of a pair of valence electrons by two atoms. There's also what is called... And then they come up with co-ed, co-founder, co-pilot. So I've had kids literally, you know, years after watching this, remember certain things from Edpuzzle because you're presenting content that's um, customizable and it's called exactly, polar co um, focused on your class and your learning. So how does Edpuzzle work? So Edpuzzle, um, I'll use this as an example here. So you simply go to uh, Edpuzzle and log in as a teacher and you come up to a, um, a board like this and let's go to the content section. So your content here you can choose, let's do my content here. You can choose from any of these popular channels. You can search for anything on YouTube, Khan, TED Talks, all this kind of stuff. Or you can add your own content. You can create a video with the students. You can upload a video, student project folder. And once you do that, and this is one that I love back from 10 years ago from HHMI Biointeractive of really visualizing how the inside of cells work. So I'm really, really into models, any kind of the kids making a model, building a model, um, getting creative and finding some way that they connect you know, with the idea. So you know, this idea of DNA is, is really hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine how fast stuff happens in a cell, like in, in real time. And so when they see something like this, to me, it's, it's creating more of a mental picture that can have them you know, kind of build on their knowledge. So for instance, you take this video, you can cut it, and then you can add certain questions. You can add- Everything is ready to- So transcribe, what does that come from? To write. Okay, so they have to actually do something to continue. 
Thing is ready to roll. Three, two, one, go. The blue molecule racing along the DNA is reading the gene. It's unzipping the double helix and copying one of the two strands. So now, why do we have to unzip the DNA? You know, why is this molecule, why is it separating the DNA? And this is from a previous, you know, is to read, you know, to read the base pairs inside the, name, the DNA, okay? Or whatever their, their answer is. This is the open-ended question. The yellow chain snaking out of the top is a copy of the genetic message, and it's made of a close chemical cousin of DNA called RNA. The building blocks to make the RNA enter through an intake hole. They are matched to the DNA, letter by letter, to copy the A's, C's, T's, and G. So I'm pausing right now just, just to tell you that, that for me as a scientist and as a science teacher and always trying to hone you know, my ideas, when they have the idea of our little machinery inside of our cells making things and building things like we do with our hands, how can you get RNA unless there's building blocks to make it with? So when you have this kind of high level, almost medical school, college level website, HHMI, um, to me, it's, it's great to mix everything from brain pop, which I've used for 15, 20 years now almost. And I know the, the founders, you know, from FET from their beginning, always looking at new ways to, to have um, concepts expressed and how the students react and engage to it. So I'm not going to continue this in the in the space of time, but um, my other question here is that what you know what else would you use um, in terms of what's the difference between RNA and DNA? So there'd be another question here, so you'd have to choose it. So when you choose it and submit it, this goes to your grade book for checking for understanding. This is instant, by the way. This is why Edpuzzle. It's worth you know going through the tutorials and reading because again you can adapt it to anything. All right. You are watching this process called transcription in real time. It's happening right now in almost every cell in your body. All right, so Ed Puzzle, spectacular. <clears throat> and now let's go on to one of my favorites. So let me see how I'm gonna do this. So this is Zoom Cam. So we're all used to sharing. I'm sharing my slide deck right now, but there's other things you can share. And you can, when you hit the share button, you get um, different screens that look like this. Okay, so you can share the desktop, you can share individual tabs, you can share whiteboard, which is a little limiting for me personally. Maybe I haven't, not as good as you guys, but I don't use that that much. But you can also share via AirPlay or through a USB cord, you can share your phone. So many great things to do. So let's start off. So, first thing you do, is stop sharing and then you share with your phone. So I'm gonna do that now. And you're gonna get a little glimpse into my table and my workshop here. But the first thing I'm gonna do is turn my phone off because it always needs a new connection uh, when you're going through AirPlay. And a lot of people are asking, do you use the Apple TV? I do not use Apple TV. This is just the standard iPhone. Um, I have an old one, it's like almost two years old now standard Wi-Fi. I haven't got any major problems with this at all. So I'm going to turn it on again. So it's kind of working up. So now I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And now I'm going to share, which you can't see, but I showed you hopefully, the iPhone via AirPlay. So step one, via AirPlay. Now it's telling you what to do. And I'll, I'll come back to the screen in a minute. It says tap screen mirroring. And if you're not familiar, you just swipe and you find screen mirroring. And then choose Zoom. And there's my Zoom. And let's cross our fingers. And voila. So now I'm about to use my phone. Now, something I would love to share with all of you right now is something called a Zoom freeze. Screen. Now, if you've worked on big interactive boards in the past, I was in middle school for 10 years, there's, a, there's a, the, you know, a function to press so you can't see 
you know, what's going on on the teacher's computer. Same thing here. So if you go to your doc, you know, for your Zoom, it has mute video security participants, and you hit pause share, I now have pause transmitting to you and to my extra screen. I have two computers here. So now I can open up my, um, you know, screen. You can't see my, my screen. You can't see my icons. You can't see my personal stuff, but I can turn my camera on. Now I do resume share. And by the way, there's a fabulous um, orange background on my whole screen here, which actually I'll take a little picture of, okay? But now I have my live camera. So you're about to see my live camera. Okay, so now um, the screen mirroring should be live. Let's see if I can do this again. All right, so just bear with me one second because I have a microscope to attach this. So I have to turn this off again. I think I waited too long to talk. Usually I just do this right away. So I am going to do this again. So I'm turning on my phone. And I'm stopping the share. And now I'm gonna share again. I'm gonna go directly this time without the free screen. Maybe that's what it was doing. I learned something new every day. So this time I'm not gonna be shy about you seeing my, my phone's uh, icons. <laughs> but the screen freeze is fantastic. If a student asks a question and you wanna freeze the screen and go send them an email, for instance, or you get something very important coming in from the district for any reason you want to freeze your zoom screen okay but you also want to uh, have some privacy so right now you are seeing my phone so let's go to the camera function so now you're in my kitchen all right so here's my computer i'm you know using as my zoom here's my secondary computer where I have the chat, uh, I have the participants, um, I have all kinds of stuff I can do at the same time. Most importantly, um, I, I wanna tell you that I feel this way. If I'm the presenter, I shouldn't be telling you, can you see my screen? Is it, there? I mean, I need to know what you're seeing. So when I have my second computer, or it could be a Chromebook, the school issued, by the way, then I know what you're seeing. So the great thing about um, having the, the camera, as you can imagine, is there are so many things you can do. You can show videos directly or pick pictures from your phone, but the most important thing is doing live activities, okay? So I'm gonna go through that in the next uh, slide because I didn't wanna set up live activities for the sake of time, but I will show you something fun that we're doing. I took the 3D printer home during this pandemic and I was able to print out, we're now up to about 80 of these face shields through uh, MakerBot. So these take about a half an hour to print. And then the students get the pieces. I drop off kits once a week and we make uh, face shields. So we make this really beautiful face shield and the kids have a little note on there. And um, I'll put it on and demonstrate, put my phone down. Okay, so now we have a face shield and we've donated 75 to Children's Hospital so far. And so the kids love making them and the, the institutions that we donate love receiving them from kids. So it's something to be uh, really, it's fun to do kits and drop them off and have the kids um, active. So I'm gonna stop sharing, but before I do, um, I'm gonna show you my other favorite thing. This is a microscope. And this is $6, it's in my slideshow. Um, since I have this working, I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna put this microscope on my camera and I'm going to enlarge the aperture here. And you can see it's a little bit fuzzy. And then I now can do anything and it has a little light that goes on too. But I can take a picture, for instance, put it up to my skin Kids love looking at their jewelry, their tattoos, their skin, bugs. Um, you can videotape with it. 
And um, this is my ring. So we take a look at the scratchy gold. So you can turn your phone with a six to $7 Amazon microscope into anything. And if you're CTE, you can use it for anything live to show a machine or something specific, not only using the regular camera, but the microscope. So I'm gonna stop sharing this and go back to my pre-prepared slides. And thank you for your patience. Uh, so let's hop back and share my slide deck. I'll show you a couple of live things that I have done. Um, and I put them in Edpuzzle to show you how easy. So again, this is, you hit air, phone airplay, and then you turn off your phone, turn it back on, and then you hit this button here, which is a, um, the, the share, and here's the pause uh, that I was talking about. Here's the pause button. If you hit that pause button, an orange uh, screen comes around and you have privacy while you're doing stuff on your computer. I think that every Zoom presenter should at least have that option instead of stopping to uh, share. So Eric, have, sorry to cut you off there. We have a question in the chat regarding the name, uh, the item name of the, the microscope you just here showed. It here it is. Thank you for being patient. So. Um, it is a $7 item. It is amazing. My kids love this. Uh, every single kid has one. I, you know, figured out ways to get, squeeze some money out of every school I've been to. And here's the Amazon link. Um, if you just do cell phone microscope or something like that, um, here it is. It is just absolutely wonderful. The kids come up with, they take videos of insects. I got insects, spiders eating a fly that they have, you know, so that's in my slide deck. Uh, it comes with two lights, a blue a black light for nighttime stuff. And because we do glow in the dark robotics with the different filaments. And also um, this is what it looks like. For um, some of the uh, images, as I showed you, you do close-ups. Um, and then also for the clip-on, the non-microscope, the flip book, students can take videos and then submit for Edpuzzle, this is an example of a student doing a flip book. And as soon as they did it, they submitted it through Edpuzzle. And it was a great way to, instead of sending a video through email, um, this was really a great way to share for a flip book. And um, they really like learning the technology. Some of the other things live, um, that I chose not to do. Atoms, are they empty space? So this is something I did live here in the kitchen. And it's the idea that if atoms are empty space, well, how come you can't put a, you know, a pencil through your hand? So here, very simply, I just had a, a fan blade going to represent the, um, the electrons zooming around. And in the classroom, we do this with a ceiling fan. They move slower and they see if they can get, you know, the ping pong ball through the ceiling fan, but at home I was able to do uh, this. So great live activity. Um, also for phase changes, I had some isopropyl al alcohol in the, in the freezer and pulled it out. And here's some sound in the background. Really right. Really right. Even if you put it in dry ice, it can't freeze, okay? So what I've done is I've made ice just by the condensation. So the phase change has gone from um, gas in the air, okay? And it's hitting the freezing cold alcohol because Nayeli says it can't, it can't freeze to a solid, so it's cold liquid. It's not freezing cold, it's just cold. It's cold, exactly. And it's freezing for the water, but not freezing for the alcohol, okay? No, try putting it in the microwave. He wants me to put it in the microwave for 30 seconds um all righty which, i will go and do that which, which, which i did of course all i did is warm it up but uh you know doing live things like that it gets the kids on their mute maybe on their video but at least you know on, on their mute button all right so those are uh some um techniques to take any kind of content and present it customize it you know have it kind of interactive and now i only have a about five minutes left, but I do want to remind anybody who is doing anything in the sciences whatsoever to keep these other sites in mind. So PHET um, is, comes from a Nobel Prize winning program. It's absolutely spectacular because it's true, true simulations. 
And they have increased their base all the way from look at these different um, science backgrounds, not just physics, but math also. If you're doing any kind of math with your kids, it's HTML5. That means it'll work on your phone. So if you want to do slope intercept graphing, pull this up and in 10 minutes, your kids will be graphing with their finger like never before. It's fantastic. It also, you can go through grade levels, okay? So one of my favorites here is building an atom. And uh, even if you're doing earth science, you know, you could use this, especially if they've never seen this before, it's an opportunity uh, to do it. So it not only, you know, shows you, you click on all the different options, you can see when something is turns into a new element by the you know atomic number it's unstable because the two protons are fighting so you have to put neutrons in there now it's you know um, stable and you're going to need two electrons here so now it's neutral so it's it's a fantastic interactive tool to be aware of okay um always search through the next four um sites if you're gonna present something and it's got a little bit of a science background because you'd be surprised what can pop out. Okay, so PHET, um, again, using it for 10 years, absolutely love it. You can also get very creative. So when they're doing physics, you know, they do skate parks and they can build their own ramps and put their skaters on here. It'll show the difference of kinetic and potential energy, thermal energy, they get super creative. And this is something great that I love to share. So. If they're on their computers and they're networked, then I can put their screen, you know, up on the big screen. They can share and they can, you know, kind of be proud of, of what they're what they're doing. Uh, another spectacular one that's been around for a long time is Cells Alive. Again, this is just a quick little uh, view. I really encourage you to click on these if you have not done so, because they are truly uh, very, very robust and deep. Uh, this is one of my favorites here to show mitosis. Here's an actual micrograph of a video happening, and here's the animation. And so it goes through the phases. Okay, so you can, you know, clearly have an idea of the animation and the real life one here as well. Um, Cells Alive has just, I could spend literally 45 minutes on each one of these, I promise you. Learn Genetics, again, absolutely amazing. They're super famous for this, uh, one of their first ever simulations. And first of all, I just wanted to show you how incredible the menu is for all these different science tools. The virtual labs are the ones that are absolutely fantastic. But let's say you click on a, a subcategory, you're gonna have different color codes with, uh, you can actually make a human karyotope, cut out the chromosomes, match them, okay, do that digitally. Uh, there's different uh, video clips that are more PBS kind of versions, you know. I try to stay away from YouTube and try to go through different videos put on by uh, science, you know, background companies, science background. Um, this one here is something that you can use if you're not even using science. You know, what is the size and scale of the world? And so here's a great slider. You start off with a coffee bean. And then you slide in, and not only do you have the scale, check this out on the upper left corner. So you're seeing your millimeters, check what it goes down to. You're seeing the relative size. So there's a human egg, there's an ovum. So what's that gonna be? Maybe around, you know, uh, now we're micron range, 130 microns, okay? So let's keep on going. And now let's get down to what's inside of cells. So here we have mitochondria. And the bacteria, so they can see, my gosh, a bacteria compared to a coffee bean is just crazy, but we're not done. So we keep on going, going. There's our viruses in the news and different types of parts of the cell. And then finally down to picometers for the carbon atom. So this is one of its most uh, famous initial simulations. Uh, but again, Learn Genetics has just a tremendous amount of of different genetics. Actually, today I did this breeding of pigeons where you click on it and, and you choose the different uh, genes to go in the pigeons and it breeds the pigeons for you. And the kids love that. And the build of DNA is, is just uh, fantastic for really learning about life being just made up of A, T, G, and C and how this is what life is. It's these 
these bonds that never break because A and, C, uh, A and T have two bonds and G and C have three. So that's really great. Um, also, um, Learn Genetics has great extractions. Uh, so even if you're, again, not too sciencey and you want to talk about DNA, this is a virtual lab that takes the students through the pipettes, the centrifuges, the water baths of what we would take to actually uh, extract a DNA. And this takes about half an hour to go through and uh, the kids really, really love it. Um, and then for the last one, Howard Hughes, uh, where I showed you that uh, transcription animation. This one's really fun because they get to inject DNA into Drosophila larvae and actually see what it's like to do this in the lab. And if you're kind of an old school science teacher, maybe you've read uh, Drosophila in the lab, it's really kind of easy to do and fun for the kids to really feel like they're doing something with science. But before we do that, we can do it virtually. So thank you guys. Um, hopefully I've stayed on time and I really, really appreciate you taking the time and listening to me get excited. <laughs> uh, I know you may be familiar with a lot more of these sites, but I really love um, exploring and finding new things that uh, my kids react to and um, getting feedback from them and from my fellow teachers. So, so thank you so, so much. If anybody wants to stay on and talk, uh, uh, answer questions, please, please do. That's what I'm here for. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the rest of the sessions. Thank you so much, Eric, and thank you everybody for attending. Some awesome resources there. Um, one thing, a couple of people in the chat were mentioning um, regarding the presentation, if you can maybe change the sharing settings, because I think right now it's, uh, they're restricted for uh, oh, to the owner as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I will um, how to do that, absolutely. Because yeah, I think the PDF doesn't have a direct link to some of the stuff you're, you're talking about. Okay. Um, I will so, yeah. that immediately, okay? So um, thank you, thank you so much, all right? Well, thank you everybody um, for, for attending. I hope you found it you know, uh, valuable. And if you have any questions, please feel free to either unmute yourself or type them in the chat and we'll probably stick around here for another minute or two before you guys uh, head off to your next sessions. Um, hope everybody has a, a wonderful day. This session was recorded and it will be uploaded into the main um, you know, source for all the other presentations if you'd like to go back and check it out or share with your colleagues. Thank you guys so much.